What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another match of fandom fights. We are here for a team's number one, number one contenders match. I tried to say number and contender at the same time. That didn't really work out. Why are you? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that to me? Nothing. That no, wouldn't do anything. Am I? Am I like breaking up or something? I don't know. No, you just flubbed over your words. I was. I was having a joke yeah. at your expense. Ah, having a. God, I love jokes at other people's expense. Uh, so we are getting into this match, a contender match. We're at the end of the ladder, although the ladder might have been done. And then Guns no, and Ships. I would, like, I would call this the end of the ladder. Guns and Ships has made it to the end of the ladder. They did what they were supposed to do. You're fighting insects, and now Guns and Ships has to fight dummies. Uh, what do you think of the match? Good. Smooth transition there. Uh, that was good. Uh, the ladder has been fun. Uh, we've had some breakout teams like the Galactic's Nuts, and then the Kingsman basically just traded off winning and then losing to the next Kingsman team that came in the ladder, all the way up to Guns and Ships at the end, uh, winning their match against Manhattan Project to make it to this match here against Dummies, who won the very first match of the ladder uh, against Demigod Complex, allowing them to skip to the end. Here's the end, Tim, and it's quite a showdown. Yeah. So, uh, winner of this will go on to play Wookie Mistake at Mayhem at the Multiplex. Uh, very excited about that. And so, let's go talk to those teams right now and see what they think in the promos. We've been waiting for this one, haven't we? Uh, this has been this has been fun. We were wondering which one it would be. If it was Manhattan, anyone can cook, uh, guns and ships, whichever Kingsman team it was going to be. And uh, now we got we got the scenario we wanted. Uh, and I like our odds a lot. Uh, so. Albert, you played freaking great against Joe. Boat, you've been killing it all year long. The two of you together, disgusting team. And I love what we've been doing. So I think it's only right that we go play Wookiee for the third time and, uh, and get that belt. Oh, yeah, it has been three times. I don't know who can keep track, who can keep track anymore. Albert's played them like five times at this point. I like I don't know how numbers work. Uh, none of us do. Let's play. You didn't even watch the television show numbers. <laughs> well, here we are, boys. Uh, we're back. You guys are a number one contender match. You you had the belt a while ago. You you beat probably the best fandom team that has ever existed. Uh, our two wonderful hosts here, and uh, now we got another challenger in our hands. Uh, again, fun DMC versus Kingsman. Because why not? That's what we do. Let's keep this train rolling. How you two feeling today? Um, I, I watch numbers though, so I do know how they work Ooh. and I think that can help in this match. Just want to put that out there. Excellent. Yeah. All I got to say is, uh, I'm just going to quote, uh, my war zone partner when I say, let's kick this pig. A quote from Bill. Can't go wrong. Let's do this. All right, Nick. Uh, I'm flattered. But also, we got to get into this. This is intense. What'd you think of the promos? Uh, they were good, Tim. Okay, round number one. How's it work, Nick? Round number one. It's going to work like this. We have 10 questions in the realm of fandom fights. Each player will answer individually on their whiteboard. Uh, they'll have 15 seconds to answer the question. At the end of 15 seconds, we'll say pens down. Players will then reveal their answer and say it aloud. Each correct answer will be worth one point apiece should any individual player get all 10 questions correct in round number one. They would receive a bonus question. Uh, each team will have three repeats, one challenge for the entirety of the match. Teams, any questions as we get into round number one? All right, then your first question will come in the category of Middle Earth. The question is, who strikes the final blow on the cave troll in the Mines of Moria, killing it in the Fellowship of the Ring? How do you feel about Mines? Uh, I think they are seriously undervalued street performers. We really just don't give enough credit to not saying anything. Like yeah. They're in a box. I didn't know that. Three. that they're not good. actually in the box. One. Pens down. That was that was good. Uh, let's go to Jake. Legolas. Uh, Bowman. Caleb Bowman. I'm lagging a little bit. Gimli. Uh, Robert. Legolas. And Albert. Legolas. Legolas is correct. Boatman, can you hear us now? What? 
All right, Legolas was correct. So dummies are up two to one as we get into the next question, which is going to be in the category of horror icons. Which number anniversary of Michael's original attack is being honored by Tommy Doyle in Halloween Kills? Number. Yeah, you know, we didn't think they would rear their ugly head, but yet here they are. Three. There's five more Three. of them. One pens down. Let's start with Boatman. I said fortieth. Uh, Robert. I also said fortieth. Albert. I also said fortieth. And Jake. Fortieth. Fortieth is correct. So clean sweep. Four to three. What is next? The next question is in the category of the MCU. The question is. Who plays the deviant crow who is killed by Thena near the end of Eternals? I, I, all I have going through my head is stuff about this movie. So. Oh, okay. Um, Which I can't talk about. Let's talk more about the underappreciation of mimes in this in this world. Yeah, you know they do. They work hard. But... Sometimes it's like it's windy out, but it's not. One pens down. I'm angry about it. <laughs> Let's go to Robert. Bill Skarsgård. Albert. Bill Skarsgård. Uh, Jake. Bill Skarsgård. And Bowman. Did not happen. Bill Skarsgård is correct. So six to four in favor of dumb ease as we get into your next question in YA. Who originally takes the bow and arrows from the cornucopia until Katniss gets them in the Hunger Games? Have you ever shot a bow and arrow? Yeah. Like in school, did you do that, Archery? No. Nope. We did that in gym class. Oh, aren't you cool? Yeah, a little set of little things. Camp. Camp. But one time I saw this mime and he was pretending to shoot a bow and arrow. Two. And shot it at another mime who then pretended to get Heads it. down. That's intense. Uh, let's go to Albert. I said Clove. We will go to uh, Jake. I said Glimmer. We will go to Boatman. I had no idea. I said Kato. And Robert. I said Rue. One of you is correct, and it is Jake Meltzer. Glimmer is the correct answer. So dummies will go up uh, seven to four. As we get to your next question, which comes in the category of the worlds of DC. That's me, my bad. Okay. Let me mute real quick. Okay, I'll, yeah, we'll wait. <laughs> All right, well, we'll get to your next question, which comes in the category of the worlds of DC. The question is, which worlds of DC film features one of the main characters killing a president? See, but if you were a mime, I wouldn't have been able to hear that. It's true. It's a good point. It's like Cody when he's muted. Five. Yeah. Four, three. Repeat the question. That's going to be the first repeat for dummies. All right. The question again. Which Worlds of DC film features one of the main characters killing a president? What is your favorite of the uh, sour candies? You like um, Sour Candy, like Sour Patch Kids, stuff like that? Not really, but also, how did we get here? Uh, because in front of me, we have Sour Punch Straws. Okay. Um, that's like the second time in a very short amount of time that you've pulled some sort of gummy sour snack. Four, three. Oh, the Nerds Gummy Clusters. Yeah. One, pens down. Uh, I believe we're back up to Jake for this one. I think my perfect round is over. I said Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. We will go to both. The Suicide Squad. We will go to Robert. I said Wonder Woman 84. And Albert. I also said The Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad is correct. So guns both hitting that, making uh, the lead uh, a little smaller as it's now 7-6 to six in favor of dummies. Uh, we are going to get into your next question. In the category of Planet of the Apes, what does Caesar do in the town square? that forces Armando to let him go since he knows the humans will be looking for him in Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, we will take a uh, 
somewhat. Somewhat general answer. General answer. Actually, just how general is somewhat? <laughs> Let us tell you the answer to the question. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we. I think we should tell them the answer right now. That's what I just said. Oh, three. Okay, Tim, ignore two. me. One, Penn's I thought you said something much sassier. I thought you said, just tell me the answer. I was like, Nick, please. Uh, let's go to Boatman. He speaks. We will go to Robert. I went as general as that. He spoke. Uh, we will go to Albert. He speaks. And we will go to... Oh, no, uh, I, said, I said yells words at the... <laughs> yeah, we, we could have taken yell, speak. That's kind of like, yeah. Okay. But we... I, sir, I tried to tell you, like, to, just general. Yeah. I didn't know what could have been more general than that, so that's why right. I was worried. What is the score? I think I have the wrong. Is it nine to eight? Nine to eight. Okay, okay. I thought I had it wrong. But uh, nine to eight, as we get into the next question, what is it, Nick? The next question comes in the category of the wizarding world. The question is, what is the name of the headmistress of Bo Batten's Academy of Magic in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire? You know what I'm going to do for you right the now? full name or... Uh, what they are referred to, or yeah, they are referred to as that in the movie. That is fine. Um, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> I'm asking you calmly, but like, did you? I actually asked one of the older students to do it. Three, two, one, pens down. Let's go to Robert, Madam Maxine. Uh, we will go to Albert. I said Madame Maxime. Uh, we will go to Jake. Madame Maxime. And Bowman. I just had Madame. Uh, Maxime is correct. So Jake and Robert will get that. Albert, unfortunately, that with the N there, that is incorrect. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dummies strengthens that lead uh, again as they are now up 11 to 8. Uh, as we get into your next question in the category of DC. How does Selena Kyle alert the police to her location during the transaction with Striver in The Dark Knight Rises? And again, we will take a general answer. Um, I have, like, well, yeah, never mind. Never mind. Okay. I'll tell you on the next question. It has to do with this movie. So okay, okay. That makes sense. Let's but talk more about mine. Did you put your name in the goblet? <laughs> Did you put your name in the goblet of fire? That's one of the Me oldest things to do it for you. I Potter. Absolutely sure. <laughs> I Potter. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's go to. I don't even know where we are. Let's go to Albert. I said make a call. Uh, we will go to uh, Jake. Yeah, she makes Striver call phone. We'll go to uh, Bowman. She uses a phone. We'll go to Robert. It said lights the bat signal. I think we can take everybody but Robert. Yeah. We can only accept Caleb Boatman's answer because she does not have him make a call. She has him send a message. So. Oh. Yes. Well, there Use you a, go. Using a phone is as general as we needed, but making a phone call is too specific and it's incorrect. So. There Bowman you go. Be, okay. And what did Boatman have? Boatman just said, "Use a phone." Use a phone. Use a phone. All yeah. right. Well, then Caleb Boatman gets that point. Okay. You already know that you're absolutely Woo! correct. So uh, then Boatman uh, makes guns their lead or their score nine to the uh, eleven to the dummies. So, correct. Uh, what is the next question, Nick? The next question will come in the category of scores and soundtracks. The question is, who sings the title song for "Tomorrow Never Dies"? Don't, because we can't, because we're asking about it. So what I was going to say before was uh, I have seen The Dark Knight Rises yeah. easily 20 times. Like, I, I weirdly love that movie. I had no idea that character's name was Strider. Yeah. Not a fucking clue. Oh, yeah. No, well, yeah. Mr. Striver. Yeah. Like, I'm sure it's said many times. Philip, Philip Striver. He's the one oh. who, like, Aircrow sends to the... Might uh, not be Philip, but, you know. Hands down. Uh, let's go to Jake. Cheryl Crow. Uh, Boatman. She wants to soak up the sun. <laughs> uh, let's go to Robert. Had the wrong one. I said Tina Turner. And Albert. Cheryl Crow. Cheryl Crow is correct. So uh, Guns cutting into that lead a little bit again. It is now 12 to 11 uh, as we get into your final question, which is going to be in the category of Marvel. And your question is, 
Benedict Wong, John Leguizamo, and Ian Glenn appear in which Marvel film? What did you say this for? I have 12 to 11. Is that wrong? I have something different, uh, but we'll figure it out in a minute. Sure. What do you have? Hey, not entirely sure I'm correct. So. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Pens down, Albert. Uh, let's go to Bowman. Kick ass two? We will go to Robert. That's what it is. I didn't have that. Uh, we'll go to Albert. I tried to scribble there. No. And Jake. Yeah, I put the Punisher. Bowman's right. Kick ass two is the correct answer, but no perfect rounds today. And we'll be right back. We'll figure out the score. All right, we're back. And uh, yes, the score is 12 to 12. We are all tied up going into round number two. Uh, dummies, you have two repeats remaining. And guns, you have all three. And both challenges are intact. Nick, how does round number two look? Round number two is going to work like this. It is the wheel round. We have a wheel with eight fandom categories on it, as well as spinners and opponents' choice. Each team will get a spin at the wheel. They like what they spin the first time, they can keep it. If not, they can choose to spin again, but they will be forced to keep what they spin the second time. You'll get five questions in the chosen category, each worth two points apiece, unless you'd like to check down to multiple choice, in which case they will only be worth one. Uh, and be on the lookout as stealing is available in round number two. Tim, what is on the wheel? On the wheel today is... Horror icons, Planet of the Apes, James Bond, Worlds of DC, Disney Animation, Fandom Quotes, Star Trek, and Star Wars, and of course, Spinners and Opponents' Choice. So, dummies, uh, you guys are fav uh, the favorite in this match. Uh, what is your uh, decision? Would you like to spin first or defer? How are you guys feeling? What are you thinking? Uh, I mean, they usually like to defer, so I feel like we should do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think oh, defer is probably take delicious. something off the board. Yeah, right. defer them. Caleb Boatman, I've never been more excited in my life than when you hit kick ass two. All right, let's go. All right, this is the spin for guns and ships, and it lands on track. Would you like to keep that or? Spin I again? think that's pretty good for you too. I want to make sure Albert feels good. Albert, do you feel good? You still feel good about track, still Albert? Yeah. And okay. I say let's keep that. Yeah, let's go. Okey dokey. All right. Nick, would you like to go ahead and read Guns and Ships, their questions in the category of Star Trek? Gladly, Guns and Ships, are you prepared for your questions in the category of Star Trek? Mm -hmm. And the question is, Bill Hader voices a ship's computer in which Star Trek film? Oh. It's got to be one of the new ones. Yeah. I... I want to say 09, but I'm not sure. Three, two. Well, let's go multiple. Multiple, multiple choice. Okay. Okay. Your multiple choice options are is it A, Nemesis, B, Star Trek 09, C, Into Darkness, D, Beyond. Because my thing is, this was 09. Bill Hader, if it was 09, Bill Hader wasn't really famous yet. Okay. What you're leaning towards? I'm leaning either Into Darkness or Beyond, but I'll trust you if you think it's 09. I'm, I'm not confident. Four, three. Can we repeat the options? Yeah, I'm going to give you a free repeat of the options. The options are A, Nemesis, B, Star Trek 09, C, Into Darkness, D, Beyond. My thing is, I would think more recent, so I would think it was Beyond. I'm fine with that. All right, Star Trek Beyond, final answer. That's incorrect. Dummy's chance for a one-point steal. Your options again are A, Nemesis, B, Star Trek 09, C, Into Darkness, D, Beyond. My thought, Jake, was into darkness when I first heard this question. Okay. Um, but I, if, if you have a feeling other way, I'm fine. I yeah. have no feeling. So if you, uh, you want to go for into darkness, I trust you. All right. Star Trek into darkness, final answer. That is correct for a one point steal. Good job, man. Sorry, Albert. All good. I didn't know which computer that is. All right. Your next question Guns and Chips. What type of alcohol did Zephram Cochran make Deanna Troy drink in order to talk to him in first contact? Uh, that's... Do you have anything to describe or? I want to say the key load, I'm not sure. I don't know if multiple choice will help, but it does reduce the opportunities. I will trust you if you want to shoot. Three, two. Let's go multiple. Multiple choice. Okay. 
Your multiple choice options are is A, whiskey, B, rum, C, vodka, D, tequila. Okay. I have to say we go with our guy. No, it might be whiskey. Cause... What? I'm, now I'm leaning towards whiskey after hearing Okay. This. I trust you. Let's do, okay, whiskey, final answer. That is incorrect. Dummy's chance for a one point steal. Your options again are A, whiskey, B, rum, C, vodka, D, tequila. It's it is tequila. tequila. Yeah. Yeah. Tequila, tequila, final answer. That is correct for a one point. Let's stay cool. Okay. All right, guns and chips, your third question. In Star Trek 09, Kirk, Olsen, and who else perform a space jump onto the drilling platform above Vulcan? Sulu. Go for it. Sulu, final answer. That is correct for two points. Your penultimate question. What is the name of the planet of galactic peace in the final frontier? Um, That's not Nimbus 3, is it? Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's go for it. Five. Four. Nimbus 3, Nimbus final, three answer. final answer. That is correct for two points. All right, Guns and Chips, your final question. Mm -hmm. What is the first race of aliens seen on screen in Star Trek The Motion Picture? Uh, I want to say Klingons. Okay. It, are, is that like how the movie opens? It was Klingon. It was a, Klingon, a Klingon ship got destroyed. Okay, go for it. Klingon's final answer. That is correct for two more points. All right, so Guns and Chips gets their total up to 18, but with the steals <laughs> there, Dummies is at 14. Is that what you have? That is what I have, yep. All right, so we are going to bring back in Anthony and the wheel for Dummies. Gentlemen, your first spin is in. And it lands on the other one, Star Wars. Would you like to keep that or spin again? I, I think we should uh, take this. Jake, what yeah. do you think? Stick with it. Do you feel good about it? I feel okay I'll, about it. I always feel good. If if you want to spin for something else, it's fine. But I, I kind of feel like no. I think we're gonna. I think we're in a decent spot, and uh, there's a couple things on there we want to avoid. So you guys are. Think you're do. down four. You can go multiple choice on every single one and still have a lead coming out. So. It's true. I, I think yeah. we can take it, Jake. All right, let's do it. All right. All right. All right, gentlemen. I will give you your questions in the category of Star Wars. Ready? Yup. Which Star Wars film features one of the characters uncovering orders for someone to spy on them? My thought is Rogue One, but I'm not, it's kind of. I'm having, yeah, I think we should check down to multiple. Yeah, yeah multiple. Yeah. Choice. All right, your options are A, Attack of the Clones. B, A New Hope, C, Revenge of the Sith, or D, Return of the Jedi? Is it Revenge, uh, of, the, Revenge of the Sith because Anakin's yeah. learning he's going to spy on Palpatine? Yeah, yeah. as soon as I heard it, that's immediately what came to mind. So yeah, go for it. Revenge of the Sith, final answer. That is correct for one point. Sorry, that did not come in my mind at all. All right, your next question. In Solo, A Star Wars Story, on what planet does Dryden Voss tell Beckett and Han to meet him with the unrefined coaxium? Is that uh, Savarine? I mean, yeah, that's where they end up. So that's got to be where it I is. Think that, yeah, it's got to be it. Yeah. So if you want to shoot for it? Yeah, might as well. Savarine, final answer. That is correct. For two points. Good job, buddy. All right, your next question. Who voices Captain Rex and the Clone Troopers in Star Wars: The Clone Wars? It's D. Bradley Baker, yeah. Robert. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. D. Bradley Baker. Final answer. That is correct for two points and the lead. Your penultimate question: Who shoots Hux in the leg in the Rise of Skywalker? Isn't it Poe? I've only seen this shit heap of a movie once. So you want to, you want to check down just because it's one of two people and I can't. Okay. Uh, if you're not feeling super confident, go to multiple. Multiple, please. All right. Your options are A, General Pride, 
B, Rose, C, Poe, or D, Finn? Okay, well, the two people who could be are on there, so. Which, what, which one? Okay, so what was the other one you had? Southwest. Okay. Um, if if you not if the other one was your if that was your if United was your gut, go with it. Ho, yeah. oh, final answer. That is incorrect. Guns and ships, chance for a one point steal. Your options are A General Pride, B Rose, C Poe, or D Finn. Who are you thinking, Albert? I was I don't think Finn shoots him. I was thinking A. Yeah, that, that's where my brain is going. So I, I trust you. Okay, let's do that. A, A final answer. answer. It's also incorrect. It is Finn. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Don't worry about it. All right. So, dummies, your final question in the category of Star Wars. In The Empire Strikes Back, why does Luke tell Han he is going to stay out in the cold on Hoth a little longer, leading to him getting taken by a beast? He sees a meteorite land nearby. He wants to check it out. Go with it. Uh, Luke sees a meteorite nearby. He wants to check it out. Final answer. That is correct for two points. So, at the end of round number two, I have dummies in the lead 21 to Guns and Ships 18 three point game. Nick, is that what you have? That is what I have. All right, so Dummies has two repeats remaining. Guns has all three, and both challenges are still intact. How does round number three work, Nick? Round number three is going to work like this. Uh, it is the betting round. We have five more categories, or questions, uh, in five more fandom categories. Once the teams hear the category, they can choose who will take the question and how many points to bet. The other person will then take the second question. We will reset for questions three and four, and teams can confer on the fifth and final question. Uh, the players can bet anywhere between zero and two points. If they get the question correct, they will gain those points. If they get the question incorrect, they will lose those points. We will play until uh, someone is mathematically eliminated or we have reached the end of the match. Players, any questions as we get in round three? Nope. All right. First category, 10. All right. Your first category you can bet points on is going to be Pixar. All right. Let's get bet starting with dummies. Who's taking it and how much? I am taking it and I will be betting one. Okay, and Guns, who's taking it, and how much? Two. Okay. All right, your question in Pixar. During the final fight with Charles Muntz in Up, Kevin, Doug, and Russell jump out of the window, and Muntz falls to his death. What did the other three grab onto in order to survive? You're cutting out for me. Can I hear that again, please? Give you a technical, but... Yeah, give you a technical. During the final fight with Charles Muntz in Up, Kevin, Doug, and Russell jump out of the window and Muntz falls to his death. What did the other three grab onto in order to survive? I didn't hear the question. Okay, can you hear me now? I'll give it to you again. Can you hear me, Boatman? Yes, I hear. Yes. Okay, here, here, here's the question. During the final fight with Charles Muntz in Up, Kevin, Doug, and Russell jump out of the window and Muntz falls to his death. What did the other three grab onto in order to survive? Probably got to be the last. We do that. And we'll just go to him right away for an answer. I think he heard it because he's writing so. Yes, I heard it. Yes. Okay. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Boatman, give us your answer. Garden hose. And Jake. I didn't have that. I said a ladder. A garden hose is correct. So uh, guns and ships will go up two point to 25. Uh, and no, I'm sorry. Not no, to 25. Five. That's totally wrong. To 20. To 20. Uh, and dummies will lose one point going to 20. So we are all tied up. Uh, so the next question that uh, Robert and Albert have to take, what is the category, Nick? Category is the MCU. Let's get that starting with guns and ships. Uh, two. And Robert. Two. Dummies, sorry. Uh, two for both. Nick, what is the question? The question is, in Avengers Infinity War, which character do we see turn to dust immediately following Black Panther? Uh, 
getting dark in here. I said it's getting dark out. In that movie. Is it getting dark out? Life would be a dream. Four. Three. I'm going to use a repeat. All right, dummy is using their second repeat. Question again. In Avengers Infinity War, which character do we see turn to dust immediately following Black Panther? Oh, was that movie um, Avengers Infinity War? It was. Nice. Nice. Popular scene. Yeah. Big fan of that scene. I forgot about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so stressed right now. I keep forgetting we're in a contender match and we're tied, so this is rough. <laughs> Five. Happens. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. We are going to start with Albert. I said Groot. And Robert. I also said Groot. Both correct. That is the correct answer. So it is 22 to 22 as we get into the next category that you can bet points on. And you can reset who takes this. The question is going to be in the category of scores and soundtracks. All right. Who's going to take it for dummies and how much? I will take it, and I will bet two. Okay, and Guns and Chips, who's taking it now? I'm taking it, and I am also betting two. All right, here is your question in the category of scores and soundtracks. Trevor Rabin composed the score for both films in which Disney live-action franchise? What movie were you talking about? What was that, what? What movie were you talking about before? You still don't know that I was it's cars. No. What was it? Referencing cars when like he t- all the lights come on and he did the new road and they changed their neon. He's uh, like, it's getting dark out. Four. What's he saying? Two, one. Pens down. We're gonna start with Jake. I said National Treasure. And Boatman. I said the Chronicles of Narnia. National Treasure is correct. So dummies will go up to 24 and guns are down to 20. We still have a game as we get into the next category that Albert and Robert have to take. What is it now? The category is Alien versus Predator. Let's get back starting with Albert. Two. And Robert. One. Okay. What is the question, Nick? Question is, what activity are the father and son that find the crashed Predator ship doing in Aliens vs. Predator Requiem? You know what I was thinking? What's that? There were like five people on a call, and four of them had bad internet. I think the only one that would know would be the one, or the only one that would they would think would have bad internet would be like the one who doesn't. Five. Four. Three. What? Repeat the question. All right, that's going to be a repeat for guns and ships. The question again. What activity are the father and son that find the crashed Predator ship doing in Aliens vs. Predator Requiem? I'm saying, like, if you all had bad internet, but my internet was good, but I would see you all coming in as bad, so I would think that I was the problem. Uh, that makes sense. I, I have the same feeling. I, I get it now. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, oh, is it, if it wasn't me, I wouldn't know. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We're going to start with Albert. I said hiking. And Robert. I said hunting. And your winners. Dumb ease. Wow. Hunting is the correct answer. So... Nick, uh, at the end there, dummies uh, winning the match. Uh, what do you think? It's a good match. Uh, both both these teams have played very good. They both challenged for the belts. One team has won the belt. Um, and they both had to play Wookiee Mistake earlier in the year, and they both gave Wookiee Mistake a really great uh, test. Dummies not been in a title match since last year, so this will be their first uh, time challenging this year. I'm excited to see what they do. They've always been a good team. They've always been a team that can pull it together. Uh, in big moments, such as the one uh, that just occurred, they really, uh, they really, it, it was close there. And honestly, any any team could have slipped up. Um, dummies 
played it played it through. But they played against uh, a very good team in Guns and Ships, who are proving who proved themselves every time to be an yeah. underestimated and very good team uh, every time they play, even just in their last match against Manhattan Project. Uh, so they have nothing to hang their head about. Uh, Dummies has a reason to hang their head high because they beat a very good team today. Yeah. So let's start post match interviews, starting with Guns and Ships. So take it away, Nick. Guns and ships. Uh, not your first uh, rodeo in a contender match. It's more like your fourth or fifth at this point, something like that. Um, and you play fantastic every time. You really do. Uh, you, you put in great uh, matches. Happens to everyone where you, you miss a question here or there that the other team gets, and that and that's that's the match. Um, Coho said re- in a recent match that fandom high high caliber fandom matches are games of inches, and if you give up one or two too many. Uh, that's the match right there. It doesn't mean you played bad. In fact, it means you played very well. Uh, how are you guys feeling uh, about the loss? Yeah, we just gave up too many inches. That's all it was. Um, uh, too many steel drops. Uh, didn't capitalize on theirs. Really, the steals were the thing that did it for us, I think. Um, we get the we get their steals, and we get those points that we – like, they clearly knew it for two and then went to multiple be safe and then talked themselves out of it. So if we, if we hit those straight up, then – our betting round doesn't really matter. Those two drops we have there wouldn't matter as much. Um, so really just the steals is all that matters. Uh, but that's all good. You know, close game. We'll be back. He's got, you know, he's got war zone to, to worry about too. So yes, that works. Albert. We're all watching Albert's war zone career with great interest. Uh, no, dude, all, I'm, all I'm saying is this dude, this dude, two retirement matches, two different divisions, won both. He's coming for war zone. Last time he played a retirement match, he went all the way, baby. I'm just making fun of the fact that you didn't specify which ones. Sure. So we're all pretty sure who it was. Uh, Albert Boatman, like I said, you played great. Uh, how are you feeling? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I will say. I I feel bad about some of my my drops, but I also feel I I feel like Albert and I are just a great team, and I really I I like playing with Albert. I enjoy playing it with with Albert, and like I'll I'll be honest, like stuff like Kick Ass Two, just when I hit something like that, that is just like my weird pockets of knowledge. I like feeling like I'm not useless because Albert is so good. And like, it, it is good to feel like I bring something to the table, especially yeah. because Albert is like a rock star. Thank you. Uh, I don't think I'm a rock star, but yeah, I don't think anyone ever called you useless. But yeah, this is just uh, you know, you're not. Useless. We tripped. We tripped over a pebble. We'll be back. Next. This is the thing that calls me useless. <laughs> well, I'll turn it off. Uh, uh, yeah, these, these guys will be playing for the belt again this year. You played great. We will see you again uh, before year's end. Um, so we'll look forward to it. Congratulations on a well played match. As we talk to our winners challenging for the title yet again, the Dummies. Uh, dummies, as I said, uh, really, really kept your head straight, um, kept your head down, and, and finished out the match the way former champions do. Um, it was definitely a high pressure situation. Tim and I joked about it in the middle of the match about how high pressure it was. Apologies for that. But, but um, like I said, you really uh, you, you handled it very well. Uh, and you beat a very good team in Guns and Ships. Uh, and now you go on to play uh, Wookiee Mistake for the second time, I believe. So all very exciting things. What, what are the general thoughts uh, happening right now? Anthony, can I jump in real quick? Yeah, go. I, I, Jake's a fucking rock star, man. <laughs> That's, I mean, he he carried me in this game. Honestly, if you if you think about it, he he was the better player in round one by far. Um, I'm glad that the Star Wars thing we were able to build a lead. I I I made the call on that. I'm glad it didn't hurt us. And then him pulling that Nash that national treasure was so big. I'm glad he took it. Man. I'm glad he took it because I didn't know it. Um, but uh, I did. Unfortunately, I was thinking because I did know the up question, so I was like, oh my god, I fucked this up because I didn't take that. But then, you know, that, that MCU question, I'm not sure how Jake would have done it. I would not have gotten that. Okay, either. well, there you go. We would have been right back to where we were. So uh, I just love my partner. I, I think he's the best. I, I strive to be like Jake trivia-wise all the time because he, he brings out the best in me, and I, I love him for it. So, Jake, buddy, you're the man. Thank you. I mean, um, you guys are a great team. You've shown it over and over again. Look, Just look at the way Robert talks about his partner. I mean, that just shows how great you guys are together. This was fantastic. I love that you wound up basically winning on a Nick Cage question. That makes me feel great. But you played really well. Uh, you, you did exactly what you needed to do. You, it was tied in round one. 
basically tie after one question in round two, and you kept fighting. You didn't let any of those like stumbles at the, the like right here and there take you out of it, which can happen to lesser teams. You played two absolutely ridiculously good players and got the win because you two are both ridiculously good players and a great team. And I thought this was fantastic. Uh, Jake, that was, that was a huge hit and really well done. I'm, I'm glad somebody complimented the other team because uh, they, they deserve it. They are legitimately a very good team. We took this thing far from lightly. I'm really fired up that we won this one. I mean, I, I know me personally, and I mean, Robert too, but I, I can speak for me personally. I put a lot of work into this match. I think probably about as much as I did the first Knights of Ren match. Cause I knew sort of knew what we were up against. These guys have played for belts individually in teams so many times. And we knew that it was, we knew that no matter whether it was them or the Manhattan project, it was going to be a really, really hard match. And you know what? I'm also, I'm so glad that I could, I could uh, get a win for my boy, Robert, after the incessant, unnecessary call outs from the other side that really fired us up. And it's, it's one thing to talk the talk. Uh, it is another thing entirely to walk the walk. And I am glad we did that today. Uh, and we are, we are very excited for what comes next. I'm trying to make that my signature thing. Like, uh, Oh, speaking of, I, like I don't know if anyone ever sees, but um, yeah. you guys are going on the title match. No, no, no surprise. No secrets there. I going on to play uh, the team that kept you from challenging for the title at the beginning of the year. Uh, Wookiee mistake, proving themselves to be a very good team. But uh, if you continue walking that walk you just talked about, and you prepare as well as you as well as you have in the past, I think we are in for one damn good uh, rematch uh, for a title. So, some quick thoughts on uh, facing Wookiee mistake. I I think yeah. I remember them saying that after the last one they wanted to play us in a five round match. So, guess what, boys? You get your wish. what you wished for. Let's freaking go. Yeah, we yeah we we really want another shot at these guys. After I'm still haunted by what happened in our last match, where I erased the right answer. If I hadn't done that, we would maybe be in their shoes right now. But um, no, like it's we always want to play against the best, and right now those guys are the best. And you know what? They sure as heck are talking like it too. So we'll see if they walk the walk when we come up against them. I think. We're both pretty motivated uh, because we are so sick of losing to those guys. Like it, it literally keeps us up at night. Because Joe just, is my Ivan Drago. I know Rocky's not in here anymore, but he's my Ivan Drago, and I, I just want to. Yeah, and just I've come so close against both of them, uh, and yeah, I just it's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of fun and more sparkly vampires, bro. We'll see. Awesome. Guys, we can't wait for it. Uh, Wookie Mistake versus Dummies 2 uh, at Mayhem. It's going to be a good one. Uh, just like this match today was. Tim, why don't you put a bow on it? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very excited. Mayhem is shaping up to be pretty spectacular this year. So, uh, and, you know, that's going to be cool. I don't know where I was going with that. No, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be it's going to be great. It's going to be chaotic. It's going to be Mayhem. Oh my it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, so, uh, congrats to uh, Dummies on their uh, victory today, but also congrats to Guns and Ships on a very, very well-played match. Look forward to seeing them next, uh, but also very much looking forward to this title match. So, that's going to do it for us. Thank you to the Dummies and Guns and Ships. Thank you to Nick for writing this one. I have been Tim. We will see you real soon with the next match. And until then, bye. We are so glad you came. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> But again, that's the hero gig. Part of the journey is the end. Goodbye, old friend. Giddy has to go.